Hey everyone, welcome to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird, here to do a review this week of actually the comic that you guys decided to do. I did a poll on our community section of the channel, uh, which should pop up in your guys' feed anyway, where I said, what horror comic should I review next? And you guys uh, went ahead and decided pretty, pretty substantially that I should review this. Hellraiser Nightbreed Jihad. This is a straight up Hellraiser versus Nightbreed story. And honestly, in my pile of horror comics to read, I had that at the bottom. I was not super excited to read it, but I'm here to tell you guys that this two issue comic that is two, uh, you know, they're, they're what you call prestige format comics. Um, they're pretty thick. They have a little binding on the side there. Um, these are from 1991 and they are, frankly are awesome. I am so, so glad that I got these and so much that I like them that now I, as soon as I get paid a little bit extra from my job, I'm going to be getting the 25 Hellra or uh, Clive Barker's Nightbreed comic books because there was a Nightbreed um, comic book series around the same time done by, or at least it said Clive Barker's Nightbreed, but there are some characters in there that are characters in this too. Uh, and I believe there was a Hellraiser comic around the same time as well that had some crossover too. So um, these are technically part of that sort of comic continuity from the early, very early 90s. But this two-issue series does well enough standing alone that I don't feel like I need to have read those. These are entertaining enough. So I'm going to tell you guys all about it. Uh, now, this this overall, like I said, I loved it. But the writing, while at first I was a bit confused as to what was going on with a, a couple of things, but it ironed itself out and it was really an amusing ride. Like, I was like, this is really an actual Hellraiser versus Nightbreed story. It wasn't, it didn't feel like something that was thrown together at the last minute. It felt like something, I mean, by the end, the lores actually tie together and it, it was really interesting to see how they decided to play that out. So um, let me first say that uh, to give credit where credit's due, the book was written by D.G. Chichester. I have no idea if that's how you actually say the name or not, but that is how it's spelled. And the art was done by Paul Johnson here. Um, here, this front cover, I'll give you a nice close-up look at it so you can see it is the Cenobites um, coming up to grab Boone and pull him down to hell. Now, if you notice, there's a heck of a lot of Cenobite arms there. And then Pinhead, of course, leading the pack in the back. That is no bull. There are a lot of Cenobites in this book. There are a lot of Nightbreed in this book. There are characters that were not in either movie, either movie series, um, that are so interesting and cool to see that I was really impressed. And as a fan of both movies... It was really fun to see the additions to the continuity. I don't know that it's officially canon, but it, it's really fun to see. So let me show you a little example of this artwork. Um, it is, quite frankly, the, the closest thing I could liken it to uh, was Alex Ross. Sort of early Alex Ross. If you guys don't know, Alex Ross does a lot of painted style uh, artwork. I'll pull up a couple of examples here. Okay, so these are the covers of the comic books, and this is Alex Ross right here. There's a DC example and a Marvel example, but you can see the painted, painted style. It's a bit more crisp and clean with Alex Ross than this was, but let me show you just one example of a, of a nice... Um, this isn't a splash page, but this is an early... This is where Peliquin enters the scene. Um, so, I mean, look at this. There's Peliquin there, kissing the hand of someone. There's a bit of a pinhead here. And then here's Peliquin um, jumping down and attacking some people. And uh, let me just show you another really cool... Well, I'll get to it, but um, I'll show you the art as we go, you guys. Let me fix the camera here. So the story goes like this. Basically, there is... Uh, the Nightbreed are 
existing post Midian. This is after the events of the Nightbreed movie, although there's one continuity slip up that I'm not entirely sure about. I believe that's the case though, because they talk about Midian having fallen and um, Lori is also already a Nightbreed, which happened, you know, at the end of the movie. Um, you know, uh, Boone had, to, she killed herself and then Boone had to bite her to bring her back. Uh, and now they're both Nightbreed. And so the Nightbreed are kind of just existing. And um, specifically Peliquin, uh, that character that was just diving on someone, the book starts out with him uh, messing around, as it were, with the wife of a mob boss, uh, a human. And uh, it's, it doesn't go over well with them. And uh, so he gets attacked by the, the dude's um, henchmen and everything like that. And he escapes with the woman. Uh, of course, there's some carnage in this book. I will say this is a mature comic, uh, but look at this artwork. It's so neat. And I mean, look at it down here. That's uh, that's pretty aggressive. Um, but it, it's it's awesome. Look at look at how cool and and dark and and nuts the artwork is. I absolutely loved it. Uh, so that's actually an important plot point. After that, we get a look at what's going on with the Cenobites. It, it cuts down to hell. I mean, it does give us a bit of a, an update with uh, with what's going on with the Nightbreed. I don't want to get it too close or I'll have to keep fixing the camera, but you can see that Lori has kind of made friends with, with a lot of the Nightbreed, including this cool one. Again, this is one that's not in the movie, but look at how cool with the artwork you can get with the design of the Nightbreed. It, it's so neat. And then basically the Cenobites are having a large meeting regarding the Nightbreed. Apparently the Cenobites are well aware of the Nightbreed and have a history with them. Now what's going on is down in the uh, down in Hell, which we saw in in Hellraiser 2, as you can see the big Leviathan um, you know symbol there. Uh, they're down there, and this is a, p a page a nice splash page. I loved this splash page, so I wanted to show you guys, but this is an example of all of the uh, the Cenobites that we get to see in this. So check it out, man. I mean, there is, of course, Pinhead and the three that we know, Chatterer and the Lady, and then there's also a really big Cenobite here. Or here. There is a baby Pinhead sort of Cenobite here. There's a werewolf-looking Cenobite here. There's like a Lashina sort of Cenobite from the DC world. There's a straight-up skeleton with pins all over Cenobite here. And then there's this one here, who is a new Cenobite for the series, and he has this bird sidekick here. Um, and basically what happens is he starts to question the authority of Pinhead and says, we should just, they're talking about what they should do with the Nightbreed, and Pinhead is saying, they'll have their time, we'll get to it eventually, but this new Cenobite is saying, we need to go and eliminate them right now. And it turns out that the Leviathan actually agrees with the new Cenobite, and so Pinhead is sort of forced to, um, you know, sit back and watch as this new, uh, as this new Cenobite sort of takes the lead and, uh, and, spurs on the actual plot of the book which means that the uh, the the Cenobites go to earth to straight up attack the Nightbreed and it becomes a, a straight up throwdown um, by the end of this first book where uh, now Boone is is made aware of this backstory and realizes that the attack is coming but it's unfortunately too late by the time that the Cenobites do come I'm choosing what artwork to show you so I don't spoil too much, but this is another pretty cool page showing the uh, the Nightbreed talking about what they need to do. But I mean, look at that painterly style up there. It's so beautiful, man. The artwork is just unreal. And then uh, the Cenobites attack and, you know, there's a, a confrontation and uh, things don't go well for our buddy Boone here. He takes an ax to the gut and his intestines are spilled everywhere while this young Cenobite shows up and uh, the Cenobite clan sort of attacks the Nightbreed. That's the end of the first issue. It's really badass. Like, I was gonna say badass and then I was like, ooh, maybe I can't say badass. But honestly, with what I'm showing, I can say badass. It is badass. And then the next issue picks up right where the first one left off, of course, and shows another 
amazing splash page. Look at this, you guys. This is the Cenobites doing their thing with a bunch of the Nightbreed. And you can see some recognizable Nightbreed here. You can see the guy. Here's the continuity issue. If it's post median this guy got his head taken off. So how is he back? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But everything else is really cool. There's this Cenobite that's got like the pinhead nipple things, but it's got a bird face and a mallet. Um, there's uh, this uh, the other... Hang on. Yeah, see, there are, all the Cenobites are kind of here in the background doing their thing. It's just a really badass splash page. And uh, so there's a, a fight, and they're basically the, the Cenobites are just going through the new sort of collection of Nightbreed and destroying them. As you can see here, here was a couple of other Nightbreed that they could never portray in the movie. But they're Nightbreed that are actually just translucent skeletons. And yet they get smashed by the mallet of that bird-faced Cenobite right there. Hang on, I'm trying to show you there. There you go. So they get smashed with the mallet, so that's it for those Nightbreed. The Cenobites are playing for keeps in this. It's really badass. So much so that there's a confrontation. Pinhead tries to stop the new Cenobite, and this is what we get as a result. Look at this. Look at it. This guy takes an axe to Pinhead's head and knocks out a bunch of his pins. Look at, they're all going flying. It is so badass. This, this new Cenobite, this new Cenobite is just taking over in a crazy fashion. Uh, luckily, the, uh, the Nightbreed sort of realize what's going on and they find a bunch of shards of a different puzzle box. Like, the Lament configuration from the Hellraiser movie, it turns out, is not the only doorway to hell there are other ones that are different from the box and one of the ones they find are they find it in shards after finding it in shards they go to a particular nightbreed here um, it is a guy with a giant mouth and i know this guy is in the nightbreed comic series because i saw him on a cover but as you can see they're stuffing the shards into his mouth um, and i wasn't sure i was like what are they doing but then boom once they're done, they have him chomp down and it puts them all in the correct configuration that then sends the Cenobites packing. And so the, the new Cenobite says, you know, you might have stopped us, but we'll be back tomorrow. And so the Nightbreed have to try and devise a plan while the Cenobites try and, um, you know, rally up. During the whole thing, however, uh, after the betrayal by the new Cenobite, Pinhead and Chatterer actually get left behind when that happens. I don't really know why. I mean, technically the configuration should have sent all the Cenobites packing, but after the betrayal by the new Cenobite, Pinhead is left behind. And so he actually sort of starts working with the Nightbreed and helping them figure out how, what they need to do in order to defeat the new Cenobite. Uh, by the time the new Cenobite comes back, the breed are ready to, or the Nightbreed are ready to fight them. And I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff. I think you guys should absolutely seek this out and read it yourself. But there is another awesome confrontation in which um, Boone is taken down to Baphomet's body by Pinhead. Pinhead says, I have an idea of how we can defeat the new Cenobite. And so he takes Boone's dead body from the first comic that he got, you know, axed in the stomach. And he walks it down to where Baphomet is and puts him right in the center of Baphomet and walks off and, you know, says, trust him. So when the Cenobites show back up, they basically, Pinhead calls for his help, and uh, on the next page, what we get is this. A gigantic version of Boone as Baphomet. And uh, obviously there's Pinhead here, and Peliquin, and then uh, A Night of the Last Crusade that ties into the story as well. I just kind of glanced over it. But this is Boone and Baphomet merged together in order to fight the Cenobites. And again, I'm not going to spoil exactly how it goes down, but it's actually, it gets really, really, really adult, and it involves the woman that Peliquin uh, was, was messing around with because uh, he accidentally got her pregnant, and so now she's technically a human 
that is pregnant with uh, a part nightbreed, part Cenobite baby. And um, it's, it's really interesting how that plays in. There's some super grossness that I don't want to even explain um, that is unbelievable that they actually got away with putting it in a comic book. But it is honestly an amazing two issue series. I got it off of eBay. I think I paid like 18 bucks for both issues. And honestly, I would do it again. After reading it, it was absolutely worth that. I mean, the books were six bucks when they came out, 550 when they came out in 1991. Um, I think that's the price I saw, either that or that was the Canadian price, but whatever. I mean, it's, it's still worth it for the content that I got in these books. It was absolutely awesome. And I'm very glad that you guys uh, decided to have me read this and review it next. It was amazing and I, it is something I will go back to reading more regularly just like I will go back to watching Nightbreed more regularly. Uh, we do have a review of both Nightbreed and a review of uh, Hellraiser. I don't know if the Nightbreed review will go up by the time this review goes up but it'll be up soon after so um, yeah if you guys are into either Hellraiser or Nightbreed I highly recommend you check this comic out. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time I've been Cecil Laird and remember stay scared.